Strike while the iron's hot. Let's get to our cliffhanger from part one, which is why does our mesh look like Play-Doh? Why does it look so round going around this way and how can we fix it? So some of you probably figured out between these parts is that just like that huge horrendous stretched arc that was created there before was due to it averaging out three vertices, um, the exact same thing is happening not just there but everywhere across the mesh between these three vertices it's averaging it out and it's now creating that rounded edge there right which is not ideal so you solve it in the exact same way that we solved it um, by bringing in edge loops that are closer so we're going to create another edge loop not over here but going vertically so i'm going to hit Control r and uh, mouse over until it goes vertical then click once and then just move it across until it is closer like that right and you can see that this edge going down here looks fantastic which is what we want doesn't look so good up here and that's because we need not just one but we need one going across here as well so control r again click and then drag it down to be about there and you can see that this has improved it a lot it looks far far better than before this surface is looking uh, a lot harder and uh, a lot flatter I should say really it's it's a flatter surface um, and it would be uh, this this rounded edge at the front here will be correcting that in the same way by adding an edge loop there but for now um, what I want to focus on is this corner right here because although it's definitely better you can see that it's it's not ideal, and if you turn down the uh, the viewport subsurf modifier, you can kind of see what's happening, right? So these are the faces that are going up, and instead of it following the contour of the curve there, instead of it following it around, it's sort of going up, right? And because this is going up, um, and we have one that is then going this way as well, it's now sort of creating this arbitrary point, right? What is causing that? Well, edit mode, you can see that it's exactly at this point right here. So it's averaging out one, it's going one, two, three, it's averaging that out that way, and then it's going one, two, three there. And it's doing that, you know, across the faces as well, right? So if you actually look uh, at face select mode by hitting uh, three, you can move between vertex, edge, and face mode by one, two, three on your keyboard. Not number pad, it's the... Uh, horizontal numbers, I don't know if they have a name. The horizontal numbers, one, two, three, you can cycle through them. But in face select mode, if you hold down Alt and then just click on any edge, it'll actually select the entire face loop, right? So it'll, it'll show you which direction uh, those, those faces are going. So this, basically controlling this edge loop direction is a very important point of uh, good topology, right? A very important concept. Um, and, you know, it really comes down to how much time you have and this chair you know for all compared to other things it's uh, it's very very tame it's very very light it's not like a tank or something like that um and chances are the camera is not going to be getting that close to that corner there that you would actually notice a problem like this however it's a good opportunity to learn how can we correct something like this so if we go into uh vertices select mode you could imagine, for example, that if instead of these three points right here, if we were to uh, merge them and they were to become one point, and don't do this because I'm just showing you as an example, but if they were to become one point, you could imagine now that this, these faces here would follow around like that. That would be perfect. Uh, we would then have to correct, like we, we could, for example, you know, select these three and then merge them into one, but then we would have to do the exact same thing for these, for these, for these, for these. That's a much easier way to do that. If I can undo enough. <laughs> There's a much easier way to do that. And that is to uh, select an entire edge, like so, um, and then deselect these two points, because I don't want these two vertices here to move. Um, so this this area, everything over here is kind of redundant. I don't want that. If I was to uh, double tap G, which is uh, loop slide, loop, edge slide, edge slide, that's what it is. If I double tap G and then just smash it up as far as it can go right into this point here, um, then now we've got something terrible, which is two vertices sitting on top of each other. You, it's very hard to know which one you're actually selecting. That's not what you want. Um, there is an auto merge function, which I'll show you very shortly, but this is a good opportunity to learn. What do you do when you accidentally duplicate mesh 
data on top of another vertice. Um, you do it by selecting the whole mesh, then hitting Alt M, M for merge, and then selecting by distance. So we're merging by distance. And you can see in the bottom there, it says removed four vertices. Um, and there's a little setting here, which actually allow you to increase or decrease the amount of distance. So if you increase this drastically, you can see it's just gonna merge things that are like relatively in the same area, but you can see it's it's merged those, right? So uh, that you can see has solved part of our problem. Now we need to do the exact same thing, but for this edge loop going around here. So I'm gonna uh, deselect those two vertices there. And now I wanna smash it across in the same way. But before I do that, to show you now, there is an auto merge vertice function in the top right hand corner. I don't know when this came in, I think 2.81 or maybe just 2.8, I don't know, but really handy. It used to be like an add-on, but it's now right there in Blender default, which is fantastic. Now, anytime I do an action and two vertices are close together, they will automatically merge. So double tap G, smash it across, click, and you can see that our problem has resolved. Look at that. So we now have a really nice bevel effect going on here. Um, we don't have to like, you know, hide the camera or make sure you can't see it or whatever. The, the faces are following it exactly the way you want it to. You can turn up that and we can now really finely control that beveled edge there. I can double tap G, I can make it sharper, I can make it wider, etc. I don't have to worry about you know, it not being quite right. It's, it's a really common problem you see in a lot of beginner meshes, my own included, um, where you, you have that, that kind of pinching effect. It's like a, what would you call it? Almost like a crosshair or something, two overlapping each other and they shouldn't be. So that is how you can solve it. Basically by redirecting um, and then when you are in face select mode and you hold down alt and click, you can see it's now following the topology, uh, following that curve all the way around, which is great. So. Look at us, we're making progress very slowly as we learn each lesson one by one, but we're making progress. So uh, now I wanna tighten up this front one right here. So I'm gonna hit Control R, um, create, whoop, don't, don't uh, do the uh, scroll wheel, but just one, and then I'm gonna click and drag it across to there. All right, pretty good. Now at this stage, by the way, you can see that we've got vertices, like we've got things happening twice because of course, it's, uh, it's, there's two sides to this chair leg and we don't really need it, right? If we wanna do something over here and like move something over, I don't wanna have to do the exact same step on this side and make sure it matches. It should just happen automatically. So we can do that by using the mirror modifier. So if we turn on in our add modifier stack, mirror. So we add in the mirror modifier and then we wanna make sure that the mirror modifier is above the subsurf modifier because otherwise you'll have like weird, like that would be like a bubble effect. And anyways, I won't show you that. But <laughs> now that we've done that, nothing has changed because we've actually got two duplicates of the mesh. So it's mirroring it on the origin axes, which means what we wanna do is now delete half of the mesh. So for, like before I delete these vertices here, I need to have a loop cut down the middle. So I'm gonna hit Control R and just right in the middle there, I'm gonna click and then right click, which will cancel its sliding operation and put it directly 50% in the middle. Now that I've done that, I can go into top view mode and I'm just gonna select with the box tool or just click and drag over it. One half of that, X vertices. And there we go. And then I just wanna turn on clipping because if you don't have clipping turned on, um, if they were to separate for whatever reason, they would actually physically separate. Whereas if you have clipping turned on, it means that they're actually joined, which is what we want. So now I do something over here, it's automatically gonna happen over there. And then if I want to, I can apply that later on once I'm sure it's all good, but yeah. There we go, cool. So we've got one loop cut here. Um, now looking at our reference, we can see that at the top of this chair here, like right underneath the seat here, we've got a very hard edge there. And we could go to the process of adding in a loop cut and tightening it up and all that stuff. However, uh, I like to do the lazy man uh, <laughs> sharp edge, which is in a case where you've actually got another mesh that's gonna be sitting on top of it anyway, why not just delete the faces? So that's what I do. I just take these faces and then I delete them. X faces. And that's it. So now we've got a tight, a tight edge there because there is now, there isn't that third vertice over there which the subsurf modifier is now averaging out. So it's, uh, yeah, it looks, it looks like a hard edge, which is perfect for what we want. Um, now the bottom of the chair leg, can you guess what we're gonna do? Another loop cut. So it's just essentially adding in a loop cut, 
wherever you need the detail, wherever you need a tighter edge, you are adding in that loop. Um, and then of course, making sure that if you've got any pinching, any weirdness going on, that you are directing the flow, the edge flow around where it needs to go. All right, so we have a little bit of time. So we might as well make the back part of this chair. Not this part, but at least down to here. Okay, but we have some interesting challenges right here because we have a curve out here. Nice, annoying curve. Shake my fist at you, Fredericia. No, I shouldn't say that. I don't want them to go, yeah, that's a good reason to take down your video. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we've got this, we've got this, arc that's sort of cutting out there. So there's a number of ways that you could solve it, but uh, it's, you know, one of the simplest ways to solve it would be to simply, uh, let's just box select, select those two vertices there. And uh, I'm just gonna create a loop cut, right? So just right at the top here, control R, click. And then this part here, selecting this bottom part of the mesh, I'm just gonna drag it across to about there. And then if I was to uh, extrude it again to create this bottom part, you can see it doesn't look very good in this view, but in subserve view, you can see that because it's averaging it out, it's creating that curve right there. Um, so, you know, ideally you'd have, you know, something that's sort of following it around. I mean, you could do all sorts of crazy stuff. Here's the thing, whenever you talk about topology, um, some people go really deep and like everything has to be like technically proficient. And then you look at like a Pixar breakdown of like, uh, there was that Incredibles, the, the Elastigirl, and they showed like the, the, one of the rare moments they showed a wireframe of Elastigirl and it had this bad topology in the cheek. And all the 3D artists online were like, <gasps> Pixar using bad topology, but it kind of showed like the point, like, like bad topology is fine sometimes. You just have to use it like it, it's a trade-off of time, right? And the more it's time you spend fixing something, the more money it costs a studio to do it. So sometimes if it, it's not causing a problem, why worry about doing it this, this perfect way? So anyways, this is good enough for, for what we want. Um, Okay, now we have this this next part, which is curving around and it's going down there. So um, basically this needs to split at some point, right? This, this part here needs to split and separate from this main part, which need to continue out this way. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extrude it once to about here, sort of like halfway of this curve here. And then I'm gonna take this bottom part and I'm gonna drag it down and then just rotate it so that it's sort of following the curvature of that a little bit better. And then I'll take this part and I'll move this across. And this has a, you can see like it's not perfectly aligned where that curve begins and this one begins. So this is a little further back that it starts, but something about there. <clears throat> then if I take this bottom, uh, these bottom parts of this, uh, what do you call it? Just that that part, just drag over that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna break it across by not, um, I'm not gonna use extrude or anything like that, but uh, well, yeah, it, I'm gonna extrude it, but <laughs> instead of hitting E and dragging it down and then repositioning it, uh, there's a hotkey. If you hold down control and then right click, um, that will extrude it and it'll snap it exactly to where your cursor is. So you can like very quickly create, um, create shapes where you want it to. So it's a very quick way to extrude without having to like, you know, move and reposition things. So just click once down to there. And then um, if I take this, just uh, pushing C gives you the circle select tool. If I select everything there and then extrude this across, it's going at a funny angle because it's like the average normals, but uh, something to about there. And then this is now the back part of my leg. Now, this is where, you know, this is where modeling tutorials sort of become a little bit hard to follow, right? Because, I mean, people have asked me in the past, can you make like a car tutorial? Problem with that is that that's like hours of like solving little problems. That's more like, like you wouldn't want to follow like a tutorial on like, I don't know, s sketching a, f uh, a full person, right, with a pencil, if you had to follow each brush stroke exactly the way they had, which is kind of what modeling is. So as I'm solving this problem, like you might be wondering like, oh, how do you know to solve something? Like oftentimes you try it out and see if the 
if the pieces connect the way you want them to. And oftentimes it requires like remodeling and redoing things, which would be horrible in a tutorial format. Nobody wants to follow a tutorial where you do like 30 minutes of modeling and then go, actually that's broken. Let's go back, delete everything and then restart it. Like, but that's often how you end up modeling something. So I don't wanna give the impression that as I do this, that it's just like natural to me. I've modeled this chair so many times and I'm doing it for your, time benefit that we're not spending uh, hours doing stuff uh, the wrong way. So anyways, okay, so we, we've basically solved that corner there. You can see that's, it's very easy now to extrude this bottom bit, just selecting everything there and then hitting E to extrude, or you could, you know, click and right click as I just showed, but sometimes it's easier to hit E and sometimes it's not. But anyways, uh, and then I'll take this back part, drag this across. Now this is the bottom of the, whoop, hang on, hang on. Go easy there. I got one of those mice that has like the, the scroll wheel, which will like scroll infinitely. And yeah, sometimes it goes wild. Anyways, uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Now I'm just gonna uh, take this bottom bit. Whoops, hang on. And I'm just gonna extrude it one more and that's gonna be the base of it down to there and then drag this across and then flatten it. So you can see this is like, they're all like wonky. So S, Z, the axis, just to scale along the Z axis. And then if you hit zero on your keyboard, that'll uh, scale it along the Z axis zero and it flattens it essentially. So it's very easy and I can do the exact same thing here. S, Z, zero. And there we go. And now you can see with, uh, with Subsurf on, we've got a lovely chair leg. Um, now this part at the back here is obviously rounder than the part at the front because we have an edge loop going down here. Um, but I don't want to add in the, uh, this other loop cut here because we're gonna do the, the, the top of the chair and it's just easier to do it once you finish. So uh, we're just gonna hold off that until the next part. So uh, anyways, there we go. We've, we've covered a lot of ground in this part. Um, so yeah, go ahead and join me in the next part and we'll finish the base of this chair. We'll tighten everything up. We'll do the, the, the top part and uh, we'll, we'll get on to uh, the next challenges after that. So click here and join me in the next video.